put the ease beams together and there's an L-shaped corner bracket which slides into a slot on each of the ease beams and this is there just to make sure everything's nice and square while you're building it and to give you the best chance of getting everything fit together right. And the ease beams, when you give us an external measurement, the ease beams, external sizes that you can see now will be what we actually supply. And all these rooms are bespoke, so there's no, it isn't standard sizes as such, you just give us a call. We need about one week lead time to manufacture it, um, and you'll get this sent to site the correct size. Mike's adding zip ties onto the corners, these are just a temporary fix, they're there because they're going to have to flip this over um, to put silicon on it, and if one bit could fall off and hurt somebody if it was a large roof on, a, on, a, on top of a flat roof. And the second thing is to hold everything together as they drop the spider in, it's going to try and push it apart, so that's just going to keep it nice and tight while they're building it. While he's doing that, um, Bradley's sat on the floor down here building up the spider structure. So the spider structure is what we call it, but it's basically the ridge and hips put together on the bosses. Inside all of the spar sections here, you'll find this little hidden nut. So all the fixings are going to be hidden when this is built. On the top, there's a hole drilled in it, which is oversized slightly, and the bolts that he's fitting there have got a tapered washer on them. This hole's offset slightly down the spar. When he actually inserts it into the boss, it's a, it's a cast boss, it's a bound on all sides, so there's no variable pitch, you can only put it in one way, it's very, very simple to do it. Um, and once he's got them in, he drops the bolt through, which holds it together. When he drives the bolt down into its final position, the, the tapered collar locks into the oversized hole, and because it's offset, it pulls it up, so you get a really nice tight joint, and it's always aligned perfectly as you build it. Now they've built that spider structure up, you just lift it into, oh no, actually, sorry, I'm missing a step. The next thing to do is to seal it down, so they turn it over, somebody's pinched our pretend silicon gun, so Mike's going to just mime it. Um, there's, a, there's a groove around the top, which is where you put the silicon, um, and they also concentrate on the corner pieces, and once you've done that, that's the end of the silicon requirement for the roof entirely. So they're then going to drop in the spider structure, you can see the castings on the end which they're going to put the bolts in. All the holes in there have been pre-strengthened with a heli coil, so it's very difficult to strip those threads because obviously the aluminium is quite a soft material and the bolts they're putting in is steel. Once it's in place, you just give it a push down, make sure you've got the holes aligned correctly, and then go around it um, with another set of bolts with the same tapered washer system, tightening it up. Because all this has been precision cut, once these bolts are tight, this room's going to be completely square, so then Mike can follow Bradley around, cutting off the zip ties because they're no longer required. Right, okay, so now they're at this point, they're going to actually screw the roof down onto the upstand. Because it's all definitely square now. <clears throat> so the bolts that they're, uh, the screws that they're putting in are uh, included with the kit. You get a few extras in case you lose any or, or, or uh, ruin the heads. The bolt, the screw holes that they're actually putting them through are all pre-drilled, so there's nothing for the fitter to think about on site. If there's a hole there, it should have a screw in it. If it's a bigger roof, there'll be more holes in it. There's the correct amount for each roof size. It's going to take them a little while to do that, so while they're doing it, I'll show you one of the glazing retainers. So one of the big innovations for this roof, and the reason that we can glaze this thing in under a minute, uh, is the way that the glazing retainer has been designed. If you've ever glazed a conservatory roof system, you'll know there's a lot of packing involved, there's a lot of silicon involved, glazing retainer involved. Um, and then usually the strips that cover the edges of the glass, because the conservatory roof system is designed to have a lot of intolerance in it, you're going to have to cut them, and with the best one in the world, people are not going to make a very neat job of it. Um, but we've included all of those things into this one part, so to glaze our roof, uh, the sealing aspect is taken up, so you don't need any silicon, because you've got a continuous q on seal running around it, with an injection moulded silicon seal in the middle, where the q on meets. Um, this makes up the um, glazing closure, this part here makes up the eaves closure, the glass lock is actually integrated into the design, so you've got two little recesses in this profile that lock into the edge. So when you put the glass in, you simply sit that in and it can't slide down. And to fit these, you just push them onto the glazed units, um, just get them nice and central, obviously pre-gasketed, and then to glaze the roof, you just balance the tips of the glass units on the seals of the roof and just rotate these glazing retainers down into position. So you can see how this certain aspects of the roof really accelerates the installation and you can imagine on a very large roof because the biggest ones we do go up to six by four where you've got eight panes across the length and five across the width so you'd spend an awful lot of time glazing it whereas with a system like that you'll you know it's going to take you 10-15 minutes to put those on and drop that glass in so once they're in they put the inner end cap in 
these little cast caps hold the glazing retainers down into position uh, and there's a push fit fir tree clip which is a one hit fastener you push it in one way it won't come back out by pulling it you have to actually cut it off which is how you would eventually would deglaze this roof if you needed to change a unit they are push fit but sometimes it's useful to just give them a knock them home with a hammer make sure they're all the way in once that's complete, we move on to the top caps. The top caps are clipped fit into a PVC T-bar, which creates a thermal break between the internal and external profile. These all come pre-gasketed like this, so it is just a case of pushing them and clipping them into place. At this point, there's an optional extra on the roof as well. We do a Pass 24 um, security upgrade, where there will be a small Pass 24 bracket, which we've got an example of over on there. You can ask anybody about, we'll explain it, which fits in, which prevents those caps sliding up and down. Because in order to deglaze this roof, you'd have to slide those caps off, and each one of them comes with a security fitting. So hold it in place. Once the top caps are on, we move on to the end caps. The end caps, again, little cast caps with a slot inside that uh, takes the same little um, first piece of methods they used on the inner caps. And then the final part of the roof to finish it off is just the top cap. Simple as that. So if you think that was easy,